But my question to you, here we go. My question to you is can we praise God now? Can we praise God now? I don't know if it, it I don't know if Google Translate did this right. Slava Bogu Seishas? Slava Bogu. In the form of a question. Praise God now? If you are a guest with us, you may not feel the hurt the way we do. But we are sad this morning. We feel loss. It's not the same without the people that we love. And sometimes tragedy takes us by surprise. When Audrey called me at six in the morning yesterday. She said, I thought I thought we were we were making good progress. He's walking down the hall. And then for this to happen. Can we still praise God now? <clears throat> the but actually had to I, I I changed what I was going to say this morning because of these things, the things that uh, you know the experience of Ted and Karen and Floyd and for for your whole family, for Audrey, for everyone. Uh, as Patricia was saying, even if your loss has been months ago, even a year. It still hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. When we're in a hurry, driving our car, and the light turns green just as we reach the intersection, we say, praise the Lord. We go right through. And then when it stops raining, just as we reach the Walmart parking lot, stops raining. And so I can walk into the store completely dry. And I say, praise the Lord! When... When we receive a promotion at work and our children, when they come home and their report card, they have A's and B's, mm. and when you visit your friends and they say, my, I think you've lost weight, we say, praise the Lord. Yes, that's right, Joba. This last weekend, those of you who were with us enjoyed a beautiful service. Mm. The church service, but also the wedding. Ina and Adrian, mm, mm, mm. Beautiful service and a lovely reception. I mean, we can't help it. We, we, we enjoy something like that and we say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But what about when life gets more difficult? My boss, who used to be friendly, is now suspicious and cold.
my parents are disappointed by my lack of achievement. My children, they, you know how they do? They roll their eyes. Oh, Dad. Oh. And they're ungrateful. And if I'm married, my husband acts unloving. Or my wife sounds disrespectful. See, we have different needs. Different needs. But if you're a wife, you're looking for love, very typically. And if you're a husband, you're looking for respect. What happens when I don't get that? Can I still praise the Lord now? Turn in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. There's a, there's a story about praising the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. I'm not going to read this whole section. Uh, you can read it later if you'd like. I'm going to tell you the story. Jehoshaphat is a good king. He's faithful to God for the most part. He receives word, and we find this in verse 2, that a huge army is headed his way. In response, verse 3, he calls everyone to gather in Jerusalem and to go without eating and to pray to show God that we are really serious, we're, we're looking for your direction. Chapter 20, verse 4 tells us that they all came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. And Jehoshaphat, the king himself, prays. He reminds God, you, you, God, you are the one who is ruling in heaven. You are the one who is in charge. And he reminds God of the history of Israel with these, these neighboring tribes who are now invading, planning to attack. He concludes in verse 12. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 12. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. But our eyes... Our eyes are on you. God responds. God sends a message. He does not send it to the king. He does not speak through the king in this case. He speaks through a prophet that we never have heard of before and we never hear from again. The focus is not on his role as a prophet, but on the message from God.
And the message God sends to his people is, don't be afraid. It's found in the tail end of verse 15. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. God gives them instructions. Tells them where the enemy is, is coming. And concludes by saying, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow. The Lord will be with you. I want you to notice something. God does not tell them how he is going to solve the problem. He doesn't. But he says, trust me, I will take care of it. It's not your problem. It's my problem. I will take care of it. And in verse 18, the king bows his face to the ground, all the people with him. And they fell down in worship before the Lord. They were praying, God answered. And in response, they worshiped the Lord. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayer. And before God has worked on their behalf, at least as far as they can tell, Jehoshaphat, the king, he, it, the Bible says he, he talked to the people, he consulted with the people, his advisors, whoever, and he said, we're going to send the choir first. Have them be in front of the army. I, I don't know if they asked the choir. The choir wanted to be first. But they put the choir first. And notice what it says in verse 21. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love. Or maybe in your Bibles it may say mercy. His love endures forever. Notice that Jehoshaphat and the people do not wait to see how God will deliver. He says, we will praise God now. We will praise him now. And if you're familiar with the story, you know God works a great victory for them. They never had to lift a finger. It took them three days to carry off all the, the spoil of war, but they never had to lift a finger to fight. Now, you may say... Jehoshaphat, he can praise God because the disaster, the foreign army, has not yet attacked. It's still in the future. And God has promised to protect his people, so yes, you praise the Lord. But can we still... Praise God when the enemy strikes. There's a story of an old preacher. Who 
met a thief as he was walking into town, and the thief robbed him. But the old pastor was in the habit of being thankful. So at the end of the day, he writes in his journal four things, whoop, four things that he is thankful for. Four things. Number one, he writes, I thank God I have never been robbed before. Number two, although he took my money, he did not take my life. Number three, although he took all I had, it wasn't much. And number four, I am thankful, listen, listen to this one, I am thankful it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. Amen. I'm thankful I was on the receiving end and I wasn't, I wasn't committing the crime. And you say, well, pastor, that's fine. That's just money. We can still praise God when we lose some money. Fine. Can we still praise God when we experience tragedy, heartbreak, and terrible loss? Perhaps you remember the story of Job. Job chapter 1 and verse 21. After Job receives all the news about losing all every possession, and his ten children lost them all one day. Job chapter 1, verse 21. Here's what he said. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. How could Job say that? How could Job say that? Turn in your Bibles here. This is really, this is, uh, we need to read this. Turn in your Bibles to Job chapter 19. Job gives us a window into how he could say this. Job chapter 19, verses 25, starting at verse 25. This is after Job has been suffering with boils from head to foot. He's so miserable, he's taking a piece of broken pottery and just scratching his sores. He's in misery. Can we still praise the Lord? Can we still praise the Lord? Notice what he says. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. Verse 26. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. Verse 27. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. Oh, how my heart yearns within me. How is it that Job can still praise God? When it hurts, the Apostle Paul said, I don't want you to grieve like those who have no hope. 
And because we have a blessed hope, we don't have to cry in that way. Yes, we cry. We do. We should. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. Habakkuk. Here's a book that's a little harder to find. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, no cattle in the stalls, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. Friends, we can praise God now for what he's already doing. We can praise God now because he is already working out his purpose. Romans 8.28, he's working all things together for good. God is working now, not just later when we see it all come together. He's working now in the midst of our tears, not just when we smile. The psalm writer in Psalm 42, verse 5, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. We can praise him now, even now. Dr. Kidder, in his book, Majesty, page 69, says this. The Lord wants all of us to come to that same point at which we determine to praise him regardless of our feelings and circumstances. Ted sent me a text message about his father, you know, and then we learned right away that then his mother was admitted to the hospital. You just say, really? No. Can we still praise God? When you get a call that you don't expect, and all you can say is, no, no. Can we still praise God? Can we praise Him now? Slava Bogu Seishas. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. How do we praise Him now? Dr. Akitter, again, in his book, Majesty, he says, praise must function according to our will, not our emotions. What gives me courage, what encourages me, friends, is that the angels are always praising him, The angels are always praising God. Turn in your Bibles. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 5. God gives us a glimpse into heaven. The 
the angels never stop praising God, and someday we will join them. We can join them now from here. Revelation chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Worthy is the Lamb. Verse 13, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor, glory and power forever and ever. Amen and amen. And this praise goes on and on and on. Revelation paints a picture of praises just going on constantly. Even now. Turn over to Revelation chapter 7. Verse 15. How can we praise God now? How can we praise God now, even now? Because John says he saw a great multitude of people that no one could number, so many people. From every nation, tribe, people, and language. That's actually from verse 9. Standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands, and crying with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And they keep singing. They keep singing because in verse 14 it says, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before, before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will spread His tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. How can we praise God now? Because we know that one day we will praise Him there. And all of those, Ted's father, George, everyone that has put their faith and trust in Him, everyone who has trusted in Jesus will be there praising Him. And this last week, I had this thought about praising God. And I thought that one day in heaven, when we're around the throne, and we're singing, and we're singing our hearts out, And I just imagine that in that, around the throne of Jesus, and the praising of Jesus is going on and on like waves on the sea. And I imagine that each one of us, each one of us, as we think of how God has saved us, how He has been merciful, how He's been gracious, And we say, I can't believe I'm here. And I just wonder 
because there's plenty of time in eternity. I just wonder if perhaps there will be a moment where you and I may even sing ourselves. And I just imagine us kind of in a semicircle, or maybe a complete circle, around the throne, praising God. And it's a sense of, no, I want to... No, Jesus, you don't know. I really, I am so thankful. It's something that God would allow us to praise Him, isn't it? That God inhabits the praise of his people. But I want to encourage you, friends. This has helped me just in this last week to say, no, I will praise him even now. Amen. Praise him now. Now. Right now. Join us together. Stand with us as we sing our closing song.